Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Hopefully it's Friday where you live when you get this video. If not, think about this when it is your Friday. We're not going to have our Friday be a cry day. We're going to have our Friday be a fly day and talk about two subjects that I have gotten requests for. The first subject is, how do you put up your hair? Well, I have done videos showing that, but I'm going to do it again so you all can watch me. Okay? So let's begin with that. Typically, if I have a really busy work day, I use an elastic. And so I've already combed my hair. And then what I do is I pull my hair up into ponytail status. Once I get up in, in ponytail status, is what I call it, I take my comb And I comb it all so it's even all around. Now, sometimes I have to go back once my hair is done and adjust that. But it's very long. It's not as easy to put up as it used to be. Today, I am not going to do a French twist. Today, I'm just going to put it up as if... I were heading out to the grocery store and I didn't want it hanging down, going to work, or say it's really hot out and I want to get it off my back. I take my ponytail. I'm going to lean in. The other thing is, is that I have to remember to get all my bangs out. Because when I pull my hair back, my bangs do go back there or fringes, as the Brits like to call them. Love that. So I've got my hair in a ponytail right here. I have my fingers around it. Now I'm going to take my other hand, and I'm going to twist my hair until I feel that it's tight enough. You can do this with shoulder-length hair. You might, you might have some little ones that hang down, but that's okay. You can p either pin those up or choose to leave them. Always looks pretty with curly hair when you leave those little tendrils. Now I'm going to pull the ponytail forward. And I'm going to take my clip. Now you can use any clip that fits into your hair. This is one of my favorites because it really holds my hair in. And if something happens to this while I'm working... I'm not going to be upset about it. I can always get more. My nicer clips, I reserve those for when I really want to look nice, say on the weekends if I'm going someplace special or whatever. Now you see my ponytail is up in this clip. I'm going to take it and kind of untwist it gently. You want to do this gently because if you don't do this gently, am I yelling, you guys? <laughs> Let me tone it down. <laughs> Whenever I get excited, I tend to raise my voice. It's not you, so don't worry about it. It's me. I used to say we come from the loud family because we all laugh boisterously. We all can be loud. <laughs> I guess that happens in families. So now, as you can see, I'm holding my ponytail, which is clipped, untwisted. And I'm going to gently fan it over the clip. Like this. Now, this is the tricky part. Because as you're holding this, okay, and you've fanned it, if you give it too much uh, slack, it will split over the clip. And you don't want that. You want it to look like a little, like a little cotton ball, like Peter Cottontail right there. Okay. 
Now all this excess hair, I am now going to open my clip up and push that under. Years ago, that was all I had to do. I had a little bit of hair here. But now my hair has gotten so long that I have to find a place for it. Now I can either go back, bring it around this way, which seems to work the best, open my clip again, and make sure both of those sides are under the clip. And that gives me the puff. I'm going to turn around because it's going to look a little different. Okay? Let me see. All right? Hopefully you can see. Sometimes the clip can be seen. But this is what I do. I have one of these. When my customer gave me this because she just she had two and wanted to get rid of one. <laughs> I love that thing. I have a special place for it because I don't want anything to happen to it. So now that we've got, you know, the hair pretty well. See, if I go like this, it'll go to one side. So you want to secure this. So I go into the back and I push down on all the excess. And I take my, my, I call this a clothespin clip, and I find where my fingers are, and I clip just that area across the bottom of the clip, and my hair is now secure. It's not going to go anywhere. I don't have a mirror, so I can't tell what this looks like. Generally, I will hold a mirror up and look at it in the mirror, and if my hair you know, didn't get pulled back right, I will take my comb and, comb and just go up the back with it. That's how I put up my hair. If I want to tease my bangs to give them lift, I will. If, see, these are growing. I, I will show you guys how I cut my bangs, which I learned, as I mentioned in one of my videos, from a hairdresser in Colorado, a male hairdresser that I went to uh, when I was visiting Colorado. I will show you how to do that. If you already have bangs, I am not going to show anybody how to cut their long, beautiful hair. You can go on YouTube and find that out. The second thing that has been requested quite a bit in my comment section is I have a lot of age spots I don't like to put makeup on because my age spots show through what do you suggest well I only have a few age spots I'll get in close right here and I'm starting to get more on this side but this is the side that I've been driving in my car for 19 years from destination to destination for my job. And this is the side that gets the you sun. You have a lot of age spots. You may want to invest in Dermacolor Camouflage by Cryolan. Now, this is a palette. Whereas you can, it, there's small little wells. And you can match up your skin tone so that you can use it on your age spots. And this is a very, is not transparent. So when you put the color on your age spot, it will hide it. And the application of it should be done with a brush, although you probably could use your fingers, but it's recommended that you use a brush. That is where I would go. Take out your notebook right now, pause the video. You can get this on Amazon or you could go directly to Cryolan. I will link this in the description, but you might want to go check it out. It's Dermacolor Camouflage. This is designed to camouflage 
things on your face before you put on your foundation. And it's by Cryolan, K-R-Y-O-L-A-N. I do not have this because I don't feel the need right now. I can use my Age Rewind Magic Eraser. And I also have this. Let me put my glasses on. Excuse me. I also have this. This is a pot that I have had now for about two years. You can tell that it's used. I was using this as a concealer. And then I started to use it to disguise if I really want to go someplace special and I don't want anything to shine through, this is what I use. And you can see there are three different colors here. Now on the Dermacolor, you get several colors from light, very light, all the way to very deep. And there are different palettes that you can choose from. So go check that out. But I have three here. I have a more medium for my skin tone. I have a very light and I have one that has just a tad bit of peach in it. And I'm going to show you with what I have how to apply this. You will want to take a brush like this or smaller depending on the size of your spots. I'm going to put this up against my age spots right here. All right. So according to my skin tone in the mirror that I have here, not my phone, the color that's best for me would be this color right here. So let's try it. I'm going to take some on one side flip it over and I'm going to take some on the other side. And I'm just going to dab this over my age spots. Now, it stands to reason, guys, that if you have larger age spots, you're going to need more. I need more and I just... have a small area. See how that hid my age spots? This color might be just a tad bit warmer so I can mix. I can take my little mirror palette here and I can mix some of that warm. I'm just going to put it right here. And I'm going to take the next warmer color on my brush and I'm going to mix it in with this to lighten that up just a little bit. I'm going to go back. Now I know exactly what you guys are thinking because I think it as a mature woman. Holy Toledo, this is too much work. Well, you're right. It is work. It is work. Wouldn't it be nice if we were 18 to 20 years old again and we didn't have to do any of this? Wouldn't that be nice? So you have some choices and pick your poison. You can just use foundation and allow your spots to shine through. Put an extra application of foundation over those spots or those areas. Or you can color correct them first. Like I'm showing you here, now you can see that that color that I mixed is much better. I would only do this at the place that I'm at right now with my skin if I were going, like, 
one of my kids got married. I'm going to go up here. I have a mole. I like to call this a beauty mark. And I'm going to cover this up. That's pretty darn good. Because I'm going to put foundation over it. I have another little mole here that I'm going to cover up. So I'm also going to pat that. And I can hit that up with my concealer. But let's just say I don't really want to wear any eyeshadow. I just want to keep it simple with mascara. I can go over my whole eye with this color corrector. I can pat this in. I can put a little powder on it. Not a lot. Not a lot of powder. All right, when I use a lot of powder, it's because I'm showing a technique or it's because that's what I want. Now, some of the other things that you can do before you put your foundation on is take a fluffy brush like this, my Real Techniques Enchanted that I love so much because I feel like it is enchanted. It's a wand. Up, up, and away. It's Friday. You can use any translucent powder that you have already or order some. And I'm going to tap my brush once, twice, and then I'm really going to bang off the excess. See how I pressed it in? pressed it in. I'm going to bang it off. And now what I'm going to do, and I can't see the spots. They're disguised so well. Now remember, if you have large age spots, it's going to take a little doing. Okay? But I'm going in with powder because I want to set that before I put my foundation on. I don't want my foundation to pick any of that up when I put it on because I'm going to use a moist beauty blender. So I'm going to just take my translucent powder and I'm going to go around to all the spots. I'm going to pat the powder over and it. I'm also going to put some powder over my eyes because I'm not using an eye primer. I used the color corrector pot over my eyes. See what I just did? Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put some concealer on, putting my pot away now. I don't need it anymore. And this is the best tip that I have learned on watching makeup artists. If you go all the way under your eye, which that age rewind video that I did, I was trying to prove a point. You do not need to put all that under your eyes. But that's how I see younger influencers on TikTok and elsewhere do it or they make a big huge triangle here well I've got a lot of wrinkles because I'm a mature woman I don't want to do that and there are a lot of makeup artists that will not do that either and I'm going to tap this in and bring it out and around now I'm going to go into the corner and I'm going to drag it down my tear trough. And you guys have seen me do this before. Then what's left over, I'm going to bring it up under my eye. But I am not bringing all that heavy concealer under my eye. And I'm moving up into this area. I can go back. I can tap in some more and just, just kind of bring it up. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It also brightens this side of the eye. 
I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go here. And we're going to do a really simple makeup look today. I don't want to say a no makeup makeup look because my feeling on this no makeup makeup look is why wear makeup. Why may wear makeup? I would rather call it less makeup and better. In other words, if you're just going out and about and you don't want to put a full face of glam on, but you still want to look presentable, it's not no makeup makeup. You're putting makeup on. So let's just call this makeup but better. Or makeup but natural. Let's not lie, no makeup makeup. I probably should take that out. But as a mature woman, I disagree with that terminology. I am putting on makeup. Okay? I am satisfied I'm with I'm going that. to put my foundation on with you. Then I'm going to come back with the rest of my makeup on. The reason that I'm putting my foundation on is because I want you guys to see that the color corrector is going to work for you because I used an opaque concealer in three different colors and I was able to mix them. But for you, if you're really struggling with age spots, go to the link below. I'm going to link it for you. I don't make any money on off of that. It's not an affiliate link. I'm doing it as a service to you so that you can feel better about yourself as you mature. Okay? That's why I'm doing it. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to use my Believe Beauty today because I just really love this foundation. I will link Believe Beauty and the color that I'm using in case you want to know. I'm going to do one pump. I'm If I need more, I'll go back. Okay? And I, I like to to do this when I put my makeup on. That's how I like to do it. If it feels like it's too much, then I take a little bit of it off. All right? I always go around the corners of my nose because when you use a beauty blender or a makeup sponge, you don't always get in that little crease right there. All right? Then I like to go down my nose, over my lip. Okay. Now I went over that color corrected spot. See, you cannot see my age spots there. You can't see them. Granted, they are not a, a lot or very dark or very large, but still they're there. Now I'm going to go around and I'm just going to lightly pounce my foundation in. And I just want to tell you something. <laughs> I don't always put my eyeshadow on first because fallout doesn't bother me. It just doesn't. And the, one of the reasons I like to do it this way is because in color theory, as an artist, we were always taught to go from light to dark. And the eyeshadows that I use are usually darker than my foundation or anything else I put on, except for my eyebrows. So I can judge. I'm also going to pat a little bit over my eye with what's left over. And I'll be right back with the full face. I had to come back on. I put my eyeshadow on, but this is the blush brush for the Real Techniques Enchanted uh, brushes. And I mentioned to you guys 
what I paid for each set for the larger brushes and the smaller brushes. They each came in an individual set. I paid $7.99 for each set. So that's $16 for a total set of brushes. And I want to show you, and I just, I just feel like uh, so elegant. I feel like it's the fairy in me that how well these work. You do not, particularly if you are on um, social security or a, a strict budget or you do not need to spend hundreds of dollars on makeup brushes to enjoy makeup. You just don't need to do that. Okay? You can enjoy the feel and the thrill. It, if you're not a makeup artist and these are not your tools for your job, don't go out and spend an arm and a leg on brushes when you can get two sets for $16. Okay, everybody, this is the finished look. I do have makeup on, but I don't have a lot. And I'll show you what I used. You saw me put on the Believe Beauty foundation. I used my Believe Beauty bronzer. And I'll put the color below because I don't have my glasses on really nice bronzer. I chose not to put on any blush today. Instead, I decided to just highlight the tops of my cheeks with a highlighter. Use my Revolution Pro highlighter in white rose, which is absolutely gorgeous, I think. It's just such a beautiful, it's beautiful. It's Friday! It's not cry day, it's fly day. Was I used the Nicole Cosmetics Bullet Lipstick in Franny. I love this color. It is, it is such a happy, beautiful color. I use the ColourPop Nude Mood, and I use the color, which is this color right here on my eyelid, and I use this color under my brow and in the corner of my eye as a shimmer, because I'm wearing gold today, and I thought that that would look pretty. I am loved by life. Instead of saying, I love life, start saying, I am loved by life. Look at all the ball of butterflies. We are in March. Spring is coming. Butterflies mean new life. New things on the horizon. I am loved by life. Yes, all of life loves you. That is true, including all of the stars in the sky and all those that have gone before you. Okay, my friends, be well, be blessed, be beautiful because you are, because there is nobody else on the planet like you. You are loved by life. Until next time. Bye-bye.